Today we've reached the last lesson in our series, Expressions of Faith. And we're going to have a bit of a Christmassy theme as we consider Jesus, Emmanuel. Today's learning objective, to reflect and share how a religious celebration has impact on a community. So far in this series, we've considered Jesus as saviour, as light of the world, prince of peace, king of kings. And lastly, we're going to look at this word, Emmanuel. It's a word that maybe you haven't heard before, but it simply means God with us. And this is one of the big differences between Christianity and other world religions. Christians understand God as being close to us and not distant or remote, and that God himself came into our world in the person of Jesus. Let's start by imagining some scenarios. I'm going to give you three examples Choose one of these to think about. Maybe chat together for a few minutes. What would it be like for? Firstly, what would it be like for your head teacher to become a child in the foundation stage? What would he have to give up? What would life be like? What would be different for a head teacher doing that? Or maybe you could choose this one. What about if Bill Gates, the head of Microsoft, really important guy, what if Bill Gates had to become a junior apprentice in a factory? What would it be like for him? What would he be giving up? Or maybe you want to choose this one. What would it be like for the queen to come as a child living in the area around your school. What would she be giving up? What would her life be like? Emmanuel, God is with us. Here are the scenarios again. What would it be like for your head teacher to become a pupil in the foundation stage? What would it be like for Bill Gates, the head of Microsoft, to become an apprentice in a factory? Would it be like for the Queen to come and live in the area around your school? Think about these things. What would you have to give up? What would you miss? How might you be treated? Would you miss your old way of life? Would you want to change? Pause the video here and take a few minutes to think about it. The word Emmanuel occurs in the Bible in two places. Firstly, it occurs in a book written by a prophet called Isaiah. Prophets were messengers for God. And Isaiah lived hundreds of years before Jesus was born. But this is his message that he received from God and passed on to the people of his time. This is from Isaiah chapter 7. The Lord himself will give you a sign. A young woman will be pregnant. She will have a son and she will name him Emmanuel. And the people then wouldn't have known that this would be about Jesus. But hundreds of years later, in the story written by Matthew, the story of Jesus's life, we read about the birth of Jesus. And this is what Matthew records in his gospel in chapter one. An angel of the Lord came to Joseph and said, Joseph, descendant of David, take Mary as your wife. The baby in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you will name him Jesus, Emmanuel, because he will save his people from their sins. The virgin will have a son and they will call him Emmanuel, God with us. In the lesson, when we thought about Jesus as saviour or rescuer, 
we talked about God's plan of salvation and rescue for his people and the way he would turn his people back to him. God becoming human and living in his world would be the big part of this plan. And so we're going to look at the events of Jesus's birth together now. The A to Z of Christmas. A is for the Angel of Annunciation, who brought a young girl a rather startling revelation. B is for Believe, which was easier said than done when the angel told her, you're going to have a son. C is for Crisis, the inevitable result, when a fiancé learns of a baby that is definitely not his fault. D is for the dream that Joseph had one night, when the angel of the Lord put the whole thing right. E is for the emperor, Caesar Augustus, who issued a decree that there should be a census. F is for finding out the full and final facts, the names of everyone who should be paying the Roman tax. G is for go, get back to your hometown to register your details and have them written down. H is for had enough, which is how they felt by the time they journeyed to Bethlehem from Nazareth. I is for the inn that had no rooms to spare, so they stayed amongst the animals and their boy was born right there. J is for Jesus, the name they gave God's son. Emmanuel, the Prince of Peace, the everlasting one. K is for keeping watch over flocks of sheep that night, when an angel appeared in the sky above and the shepherds all took fright. L is for, listen, good news for you and all men. Tonight the savior of the world is born in Bethlehem. M is for the manger, where this child can be found. Then a heavenly choir appeared, and glory shone around. N is for now, at once, they hurried into town. And when they found the baby boy, the shepherds all bowed down. O is for the Orient, which means the countries of the East, where wise men saw a star, and at last their waiting ceased. P is for pursue, as the star guided them, to the land of Israel, to the city of Jerusalem. Q is for the question they asked of Herod the king. Where is the child, the newborn king? We've come to worship him. R is for the reply King Herod gave to them. I'm told by my advisors you'll find him in Bethlehem. S is for set off swiftly once again, to follow the star that shone once more and went ahead of them. T is for treasure chests filled with wondrous presents, a bag of gold, a box of myrrh, and a bottle of frankincense. U is for unexpected, a different journey home, for God had warned them not to make the boy's location known. V is for vanish, get out of Israel, the angel said to Joseph, take your wife and child as well. W is for wait, in Egypt you must stay, until the danger's gone, when Herod's passed away. X is for the cross, this sweet child's destiny, where he would choose to go, to die for you and me. Why is the question we should ask this Christmas season? Why was all this done for me? Whatever was the reason? Because Z is the end, the end he made to pain and death and sin. Now he waits in heaven, and if you knock, he'll let you in. We're going to look at some images from different parts of the world. These all represent the idea of Emmanuel, of Jesus, God's son being with people and they show different settings at different times. This is from Togo in Africa and shows Jesus welcomed as a new baby into the whole village community. It's especially important for them to have music um, as a way of welcoming a new child. You can see people presenting gifts too, 
similar to our idea of wise men. Also, animals that you can see are relevant to that area. This is another painting from Africa, from the Cameroon, and it shows Jesus as being born into an ordinary village family, but it shows that he's been visited by wise men who are really very rich and important in that area. This image is from the Philippines and shows Jesus being born into a very crowded situation where people are living in poverty. But even though the people are poor, they've still bought gifts for Jesus, gifts of what they have in their community. This Chinese painting is about a hundred years old and was done by a Chinese artist who became a Christian. And it's meant to represent Chinese philosophers and thinkers all coming to worship the infant Jesus. This is a very different Chinese painting and is much more modern. It's been done by an artist called Hu Qi, who started out not knowing anything about Christianity, but discovered Christianity by accident in a library book and started to paint images of Jesus at various points in his life. All his images are like this, made of solid colour and blocks. This is a very elaborate nativity scene from Poland. This one was made in Krakow and it represents some of the important buildings in that place. In fact, a great cathedral you can see there. And the nativity characters are very small in comparison at the bottom. This scene is a sculpture that was made in southern France. And the characters that you can see, apart from Mary and Joseph, are called santons. And it's a word that means little saints. And the idea is that it represents people and trades in the village. And they too are coming to worship Jesus. You can see um, somebody with bread on their head and somebody else carrying something like a shepherd's crook. Um, which is meant to represent the farming in that area. And so um, in this part of France, the gift bringers that are in the nativity scene all represent the local um, agriculture and things that happen in their area. This painting is very old, probably from the 17th century, and it represents North India and it shows Jesus as being born in kind of a palace with a mum who is a princess. Do you think that is a true representation of the story? But I think the artist wanted to show that Jesus was for rich people as well as poor people. This image comes from the country of Nicaragua, which is quite a poor country in many ways and it shows Jesus just being born in a, an open shelter. You can see the angel there announcing the birth and the banner that the angel displays means I come to tell them that in Nicaragua the new man has been born. Making the point that Jesus is for those people as well as other countries. You also notice that there are different animals in the scene and that's to represent the local um, animals that live in that area. This model is from Peru and it shows the people living in quite a crowded building um, in flats uh, with balconies and Jesus and the uh, rest of the Holy Family are at the bottom, probably in a street to show that there was no room for them inside. What do you think about these images? Which ones do you like and why? If you were trying to represent a nativity scene for our area of Grimsby and Cleethorpes, how would you do it? What would you include? Who would the visitors be? 
Perhaps this is something you could try at the end. Draw the scene of where Jesus might be born in our town. Christmas is a great time of year for everyone, isn't it? But especially for Christians. What do you think might be the difference between celebrations for people who are Christian and celebrations for everybody? Have a chat together and then maybe you'll have time to complete an activity. Why not have a look again at the images from around the world? Perhaps you could copy one of those. Maybe you could draw it, maybe you could make it out of clay or some other material. Or why not research online Christmas crafts from around the world? See if you can make something that would be used in another country. Anything that represents Jesus in the world. Over the last few weeks, we have learnt several ways that Christians may think about Jesus. What we think about something or someone makes a difference to the way we act and the way we live our lives. For Christians, Christmas is a time for celebration of God coming into our world. It's a time to gather together, to sing and to worship and to serve others too. And I hope you have a happy Christmas this year.